Thank you, and welcome to my talk. Optical flow is the problem of estimating dense correspondences between two images. While optical flow has many applications like frame interpolation, action recognition, and object tracking, the optical flow data sets used so far are limited in size and diversity. The first publicly available data set, Middlebury, only provides eight examples recorded in a lab setting. While Kitty provides already 400 examples in more complex street scenes, it is still not sufficient to train sophisticated models. Therefore, larger data sets are necessary, but the generation of ground truth data is difficult. Whereas other tasks have sensors to record the ground truth directly, like the Kinect or Velodyne for 3D reconstruction, there is no such um, sensor for optical flow. Middlebury used fluorescent ink with UV light to track pixel. The setup is very time consuming and it takes a couple of days to record only one um, image pair. Kitty used laser scan and CAD models of cars to generate sparse ground truth. For the alignment of the CAD models, um, annotations are necessary. Unfortunately, these approaches do not scale up to large data sets. Therefore, Synthetic datasets were created to generate more data. The Sintel dataset was created with Blender from the animated short movie Sintel and provides 1,000 examples of more complex scenes than the real datasets. For deep learning, the large scale dataset Flying Chairs, consisting of 22,000 examples, was created by rendering 3D models of chairs in front of background images from Flickr. But for synthetic data, the question remains, how good does it represent the real world? So in conclusion, the available data sets so far are either limited in size or realism. And what we really want to have is a real and diverse data set with many examples. What if we could obtain reference data just by running around with a camera? We propose a methodology to automatically create optical flow reference data from real sequences using high frame rate videos. Nowadays, even mobile phones can record up to 960 frames per second. Thus in future, we expect that many high speed videos will be available online and can be used to generate even more reference data. The idea is to leverage as much information as possible. A high spatial resolution allows to capture fine structure details, while a high frame rate yields small displacements and allows to reason over multiple frames. Directly optimizing the flow from the reference frame to the target frame through the large volume of the high speed sequence is difficult. Therefore, we split the problem into two parts. First, we compute the flow for consecutive high speed frames. Second, we optimize over all frames with a dense tracking formulation. This can be done naively, just using a state-of-the-art optical flow method and summing up the flow vectors along the trajectory. But there are two problems with that. First, small errors will accumulate to a large drift. And second, pixels need to be tracked through occlusions. Otherwise, errors again accumulate, like in this example. To elevate the drift problem, we reason over multiple frames for the flow estimation of high speed frames. And to handle the occlusions, we formulate a dense tracking problem. Now let's focus our attention on, on the estimation of the flow of consecutive high speed frames. We use an extension of a classic formulation to reason over multiple frames in a symmetric window. The motion in high speed frames are approximately linear. Therefore, we assume the motion, the flow to be constant in the symmetric window. We use two data terms. The successive data term measures the photoconsistency between successive frames, while the reference data term compares all frames to the reference frame. The symmetric linear formulation is problem problematic in case of occlusions. Therefore, we, um, because dominant foreground motions propagate information into occluded regions. 
To prevent this, we alternate between a continuous flow and a discrete um, occlusion optimization. Now let's focus our attention on one pixel to understand the occlusion reasoning. The occlusion variables turn off backward data terms in case of an occlusion occurring before the reference frame, as illustrated by the wing of the dragon. Or considering a different pixel, indicated by the red cross, the occlusion variables turn off forward data terms in case of an occlusion occurring after the reference frame. The occlusion reasoning improves the estimation in occluded regions, as can be seen in these error plots of a moving finger from Sintel. White represents a larger error. Now, we would like to optimize over all frames based on the high-speed flow estimates. Therefore, we formulate a dense tracking problem over pixel trajectories and pixel visibility over time. The appearance data term measures the photoconsistency between all visible frames. This allows the appearance to change slowly by comparing close frames while reducing the drift, comparing frames far apart. The flow data term compares the trajectory to high-speed flow estimates of the visible frames. This leads the optimization in the right direction of the solution space. The temporal flow term encourages smooth trajectories, while the temporal visibility term favors smooth visibility states over time and short occlusions. In the case of three occlusions, the right example would be preferred. The spatial flow and visibility terms encourages similarity between neighbors to propagate information into ambiguous regions. Optimizing this discrete continuous formula formulation is difficult. Therefore, we discretize the solution space and we use particle belief propagation with a data-driven proposal generation scheme. Now, with the, given this approach, we first need to answer the question, how good is the resulting reference data? For the evaluation of the reference data, we re-rendered Sintel at 1,000 frames per second and compared the performance on the original frame rate. Furthermore, we used the state-of-the-art structure from motion and multi-view stereo method to reconstruct static scenes recorded with our high-speed camera. With additional high-resolution DSLR images, we obtained very accurate reconstructions of the scene. We manually removed outliers and reprojected the points into the image plane to obtain the ground truth. We compare our approach to the popular method Epic Flow that uses sparse matches and an interpolation scheme. On Sintel, our method improves significantly in the visible and occluded regions. For the reward sequences, we would like to consider different flow magnitudes by using different final frame rates for the dense tracking formulation. On the simple static scenes with small motions, our approach only improves by a little compared to epic flow. But considering larger motions, the gap between the performance strongly increases. As you can see in the qualitative results of the reference data, our approach works well even with complex scenes like the biker doing a flip. An interesting property of real videos is motion blur. Unfortunately, it does not occur in our high-speed videos because of the short shutter time. For the evaluation and training of optical flow methods, we approximate the motion blur by applying line chain blur kernels according to our high-speed flow estimates to our frames and taking the average over different number of frames. Compared to using the same technique on the low frame rate, this gives us a very realistic motion blur as can be seen in this figure. Finally, we use our approach to generate a reward benchmark to evaluate different methods with different motion magnitudes and different levels of blur illustrated in this animation. In the reward benchmark, we compare a discrete optimization over sparse matches, discrete flow, a discrete optimization over the full space, full flow, an, a, a variational approach, classic NL, an approximate nearest neighbor search strategy, um, flow fields, and a convolutional neural network, flow net. Similar to other data sets, flow fields and discrete flow performs the best on our data. 
surprisingly full flow, which performs good on synthetic data, struggles with our data. Larger flow magnitudes have an adversarial effect on all methods. While classic NL and FlowNet are less affected by the motion blur than the others. The qualitative results of the benchmark without blur show decent results for all scenes besides the complex bike scene. With strong blur, the sparse matching approach, discrete flow, completely fails while FlowNet still shows decent results. To summarize this talk, we presented a methodology to generate accurate reference data from high-speed videos. We validated our method on synthetic and a new real data set and created a real-world benchmark to compare the state of the art on different motion magnitudes and the le level of motion blur. In future, we were interested in a probabilistic version of the approach that allows to measure confidences. And currently, the benchmark data sets consist of only 160 examples, but we're working on extending this to use it for training conversion neural networks. The code and data set are available on our project web page. Thank you for your attention, and I'm happy to answer any questions. We have time for some questions. The mic is right there. Um, so I think the question is related to what are the problems in optical flow that are still persisting, or what? Yeah. Do you... Or as your benchmark, you can measure like uh, flow methods more accurately than yeah. before, but there is still some error in your ah. generation. So exactly. what are the effects that you cannot measure with your flow benchmark? So um, I would say that uh, in our case, um, when we have um, um, uh, cases where we have uh, um, oversaturation um, or over um, um, yeah, saturated images. In this case, our method doesn't work at all, and this is why we actually masked that these regions out. Um, I think one case that is still a little bit problematic, what could be seen in the simple comparison is um, occlusions are still not perfect because um, you, you need to predict the motion in these cases. and. I think one thing that is interesting for, for this case is to see how learning could improve in that case to, to do better predictions. So I, I think in, in some cases where the occlusions are very large, this might be still problematic and, yeah. Okay. Thanks. Thanks.